Hello and welcome to Skill of the Week for making your Egyptian cartouche. Now we're going to make our cartouche using the technique of repoussé. And repoussé is just a French word that means to push. And so we're going to push metal like this little flexible metal piece here. We're going to push it into a form that creates our little cartouche that we're going to make. So you're going to grab one of these cards and it's a task card for making your repoussé and it has it step by step on there. So you're going to need to get your gold foil, a piece of styrofoam, a piece of felt, and it could be scrap, it doesn't matter, your burnishing tool, okay, it's got a little knob on the end of it, and you're going to need your hieroglyphic sheet and your practice sheet and a hot glue gun, cardboard, and black paint and a brush. Now, the first thing that you can do so you can get this all set up, it says on your little card here, is carve your rope into the foil with the burnishing tool. Now, what you need to do when you do that is you're going to lay, I'm sorry, before you get started with that, we need to use our hieroglyphics to draw our name on our large cartouche, okay, we're gonna shrink it down to this, but we wanna make sure that we understand how to draw it. So before we get started with anything, we need to make our symbols, okay? So we're using the symbol page, okay? The rope goes at the bottom, okay? Now this is backwards because I'm doing this on the computer, but I'm going to use my hieroglyphics page to write my name in hieroglyphics. Now a J is a snake, okay? Now there's another snake here that's an F. It almost looks like it's a slug because it has little antennas, like it's a snail without the, the snail part, okay? Make sure you don't write on this sheet because we use those over again. So I'm gonna draw large this snake so I can kind of get the feel for the shape, okay? And I'm just gonna draw it on there, okay? So pretty large, just to kind of get the feel. The A can be either the arm or the, what looks kind of like a falcon here. Now, if you choose to do the falcon, just think about the shape of it. It's kind of like a triangle shape. So if I were to do the falcon, and I'm going to test it on the back side, I would start with a right triangle, okay? And then from there, I can just look at the bird and just start thinking about, okay, I'm going to draw this part as the head, the chest, comes down like this. We have the wing, the leg, the tail, and then I can add the feet in there. Okay, and then I can put the eye and all that. So, see how it fits into the triangle? It's pretty easy to draw if you just break everything down into their shape. But if you wanna do the easy A, it's just the arm, okay? So, I'm doing that just for sake of uh, size on my cartouche. You have to think about what's going to fit on there the best because I have five letters in my name. And so I need to make sure that I can get all five letters squeezed into my cartouche area. So I'm doing the arm like that. Okay. So then the next one is the N. You can do the owl or the river. Now for sake of size, I'm going to do the river. Okay. It's just a zigzag. Okay, but it has shape to it, so you have to need you need to make sure that it's got thickness. Okay, and then my next letter is I, which is two dashes. Okay, so two dashes. Then my next letter is C, and the basket can be a C, or let's see what else is a C. I think there's another one. Yeah. Okay. So could do the shepherd's crook or the basket, depending on your, on your uh, space that you have. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the shepherd's crook, even though I'm starting to run out of room. 
I can always put the feather beside it. See, because the E is my last letter, and that's a feather. Okay, so I can just put the feather like this. Okay, so there are my is my cartouche, my hieroglyphics going down the page, and then I would need to transfer this to a smaller image. So I want something that will fit on here. So we have these little pieces of practice paper in the little Ziploc bag. And by the way, your metal isn't in a Ziploc bag as well. And I just drew my cartouche on there, okay? So it'll fit on here really easily, okay? So the first thing that you do after you draw your image on there, and by the way, I have my rope around the outside because a cartouche has a rope around it. I need to take my piece of foam. Let me move these hieroglyphics out of the way. Okay. Take my piece of foam. Take my foil. Or, sorry, not my foil. My felt. Lay my metal on there. Okay. So it looks like this. <laughs> and I'm going to take my little burnishing tool. I'm going to lay this right on top of the foil. And I'm going to trace around all of the images, not inside, around, okay? So I'm going to go, actually what I'm going to do is first I'm going to make my rope around the outside edge. So if I just go like this, okay, I'm just, I hope you can see what I'm doing here, and I'll show you. I'm just kind of going back and forth to create the feeling of a rope. Okay, and maybe it'll be easier just to do the inside of the rope and allow the outside of the rope to be just the edge of the metal. Now there's a knot at the bottom, so I'm just kind of making the image of a knot. I'm not making a real knot, obviously. So this burnishing tool will push the image to the back, okay? So we're seeing that kind of rope image, and I'm gonna flatten out my image a little so that it doesn't curl up, because when you push on it, it wants to curl up, okay? So now, now that I've got my rope image in there, n the next thing on my list says, trace your hieroglyphics into foil with the burnishing tool. So I can just lay my hieroglyphics on there, and I'm going to trace around the outside edge, leaving the space inside. And you'll see why we need to leave the space inside. We're going to just trace the lines. And since this is a burnishing tool, it doesn't show up until you pick it up. So see, I've got my little snake on there. Okay. And then I can lay it back on there, make sure I kind of line it up. Now I did that, you should just leave it on there. I did that so you could see it. But if you leave it on there, then you're not gonna have it moving around. Again, trace the outside edges of my drawing, just pushing down slightly with my burnishing tool. Okay, and then I'm gonna do the N. And then I'm gonna do the I the C, and the E. Now you see how I'm holding my fingers right down against it? That way it doesn't go anywhere, it's not gonna slide. Okay, so there I have my image, okay? So the next thing that you do, it says, fill shapes made from tracing with hot glue on the back side. Now, I'm going to wait to do that because I want to show you the other things that you would do. You could, if somebody's using a hot, gl hot glue gun and you are kind of waiting your turn, you can set this to the side and you'll take your little piece of cardboard that we have in a batch for all of you. They're cut to the right size and you're going to paint it black. So there's paintbrushes at the front of the room and I'll have the black paint sitting out for you, and you just need to squirt it onto a little piece of newspaper, 
paint all of this so that it's nice and solid black. Okay, that's what we're going to end up gluing our cartouche onto. I haven't got a glue gun ready, but what you would do is you would kind of flatten this out and then in your spaces inside where you traced around, you would put hot glue to make that uh, stick up. Okay, same with the rope. You would hot, put hot glue where the rope will stick up. All of these places that have spaces inside will have hot glue inside of them. Because then, once the hot glue cools, and by the way, hot glue on metal is going to make that metal really hot. So pay attention. Don't burn yourself, okay? If you need to, take your felt and kind of hold on to it so that you don't burn yourself, okay? Or do it a little at a time because it will try to heat up the entire piece of metal since it's a good conductor of heat. So once you get all of your hot glue in there, then once your paint is dry on here, you will hot glue your metal to the black part, okay? And all of those places that you carve will be sticking up because the uh, hot glue pushed them up, okay? Then you can go back and you can push all this empty space down, okay? I will do a, a second video with the gluing part so you can see what it looks like.